Hey everyone, please support what I do to help keep Greyhawk alive by subscribing to the channel. Also, please consider becoming a channel member to get early access to videos, exclusive live chats, quarterly adventure modules, and more. Thanks, and enjoy the show. The Bright Desert is one of the most interesting places in the Flaness, and I want to talk about it today on Greyhawk Ragnar. So the bright desert stands out uh, in more than one way in Greyhawk. Um, it was uh, it, it's uh, in the central finesse south of the near dive, and um, it's striking on a visual level first and foremost. You see, it's right in the middle of the map, and it's this bright yellow patch right there, and it really draws the eye when you're looking at the whole map. You see, you're, you're naturally drawn to this really bright thing right in the center. Um, it's also part of the wonderful pastiche of different types of terrain that are immediately around the city of Greyhawk. So you can see that when Gary was originally setting things up way back when, it was designed to be played in the game. You know, you have uh, uh, water right there, you have forest right there, you have swamps right there, you have hills right there, you have desert right there, you have all these different very types of terrain within a very small area of uh, of the city. Uh, and that makes it much easier to run games because if you have an adventure that, you know, needs a desert, you have a desert within a few days march. If you need um uh, if you need wooded hills, you've got that. If you need mountains, they're not too far away. So on and so on and so on. And the bright desert plays a very important part of that, uh, that, that kind of geographical, uh, setup, uh, which makes the gaming, uh, so much easier. Now, when it was originally presented, the Sea of Dust gets a paragraph. I'm sorry. The, uh, the bright desert gets a paragraph. Um, uh, since the beginning of recorded history the, of the Flaness, the Bright Desert has intrigued and challenged mankind. Uh, it's supposedly filled with riches, copper, gold, silver, uh, and gems. Um, it is home to dervishes uh, and, and tribesmen and things like that. And if you look at the encounter tables, almost half of the encounters you're going to have if you're in the Bright Desert are with either uh, dervishes or tribesmen or nomads, um, you know, which are all variations on a theme. And depending on where you are, you know, if you're in the hills, you're going to, you know, it, it's a little bit different and so forth. But that's the general gist of it. Uh, you've got these wandering um, nomadic tribes are basically the, the heart of the population of the, of the Bright Desert. Um, it also says that one or two organized forces have uh, attempted to penetrate the, the bright desert, but none have ever returned, uh, to tell what happened. So, it's, you know, you know, you get that idea. It's a dangerous place. And it normally would have just been left as a, you know, okay, here's a desert. Um, you know, there, there was the ghost tower of Inverness that was published. Um, you know, one of the early, early modules, uh, a, a really good one, which I did a, uh, a video on. Um, way back when. And, um, you know, other than that, you know, there's a couple mentions here and there and various things, but nothing really substantive until we get to the end of the Greyhawk Wars. Um, because that changes the entire, uh, uh the, the entire nature of the place. Uh, the, uh, when we have the end of the Greyhawk Wars, um, as at the big signing of the big peace treaty that was in Greyhawk City, uh, there's uh, this huge magical explosions and, um, uh, you know, Tensor is killed and uh, Bigby, I believe, is killed. You know, all these high level uh, wizards in the Circle of Eight are, are wiped out and uh, their clones in various places are destroyed by uh, and so on. And it turns out that um, that was at the uh, th that was the, the plot of Rary. The wizard Rary, who was a member of the Circle of Eight, uh, and Lord Robillar, who of course was Rob Quince's uh, pl famous player character, um, and this whole thing was a scheme uh, by Rary to try to take over the Circle of Eight. It kind of backfired because they went off early, and you know they, he was discovered while he was setting up the traps and so forth. Um, so he flees to the Bright Desert along with um, uh, Robillar, and uh, he's got he brings a number of troops with him. He has Painims that he's uh, brought over. We, we don't really know how they were brought over probably magically um but uh, the painims uh were, were brought over to the desert and robilar has his own troops and so forth and uh they set about conquering the the bright desert they uh they basically um uh, they, they have a, a neutrality pact with the desert centaurs that are there uh they start to um uh conquer the various tribes that are there and eventually they get about 90% of the tribes uh rary sets up a big tower right in the middle of the of the desert um and you know there's basically now this new power in the middle of the of the finesse uh there's um uh, uh 
you know, you've got uh, Rary with the with his troops and so forth. Um, there are a number of different uh, things around there. Um, you know, there's there's mines. One of, there's one of the famous mines that's uh, described in here. I'm, not, I'm obviously not going to go through the whole book, uh, but one of the the mines uh, that is. Um, uh, described in there is actually run by a, a beholder called Father Eye, which is a great, I, I think it's a great affectation. Uh, and there are Durgar in there and there's, uh, uh, you know, links to the, to the Underdark and, and so forth. Um, we also get to know a little bit of the history, uh, the prehistory of, uh, the bright desert in here. And, um, one of the things we learn is that it was, uh, before it was a desert, it was a, an arid, but still, you know, grassy kind of, uh, land. Um, and, uh, we, we learned that it was home to a number of Tlan, uh, kingdoms, uh, most uh, famous of which was Solm, uh, and Itar, uh, or Itar. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. Uh, and, um, uh, over the course of centuries, uh, Sol you know, gradually took over uh, the the lands of its neighbors and so forth, and got a little got more and more evil as it was doing that. Uh, and then uh, at the very end of its power, um, the the last king of Sol uh, appealed to his evil gods uh, for for power, and they gave him something called the Scorpion Crown, um, which basically turned him his, and his entire uh, uh, country into scorpions, uh, so, which was kind of a, yeah, what? Where did that come from? Um, so now we've got this uh, super intelligent giant scorpion wandering around the desert for thousands of years, and it also created what are called man scorpions, which is a, a new monster that's uh, that's given in the book. Um, well, new in 1990, whatever. Uh, and it's basically a scorpion centaur. So it's a, cent a scorpion with the uh, torso and, and upper body of a, of a human, which is, you know, quite horrific. Um, and, uh, you know, but they make for a good monster, which is exactly what you want out of it. Let's see if I can get the, get the picture up there. There's, there's the, the, the man scorpion. Um, and so you have now have this, uh, this great, uh, kingdom in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the finesse where none had been before. Um, you know, so it's obviously going to have an impact on, uh, Ernst and, uh, Hardby and Greyhawk and the Wild Coast and so forth. Uh, but what really seems to be motivating Rary at this point, um, now that he has conquered the place is a, uh, is to find this, the scorpion crown, um, because he thinks it's an artifact of great power. And obviously it is. Uh, we don't really see, um, you know, we, we don't have in depth uh, description of uh, the city uh, where it's, uh, uh, which I believe is called Uta, um, uh, is, is the city where the, uh, the scorpion crown now lies, the former capital of Sulm. Um, and, uh, you know, in the, over the course of uh, years in Dragon Magazine and Dungeon Magazine, we've had a lot of uh, things um, to do with the Bright Desert, you know, ever since Rary the Trader uh, brought it to great prominence. You know, there's adventures and, uh, you know, descriptions of various uh, monsters and carnivorous plants and so forth. So it's, you know, if, you, uh, if you've got access to those uh, Dragon and Dungeon Magazines, uh, which is not all that difficult to get uh, access to, <laughs> um, then you'll find a lot of uh, more detail uh, in there. There's also an article up on Cannon Fire uh, uh, that describes a little more of the history and, and so forth. Uh, but it's definitely an interesting place. It's a lot more interesting now that we know a lot more about it. You know, uh, we have uh, the, the maps have uh, things about where the different oases are, and there's ruins, and there's a necropolis, and so forth. Uh, so it's a it's a it's it's definitely a um, a worthy inclusion uh, into uh, the uh, areas to adventure in the world of Greyhawk. Uh, it's also worth noting that. Rob Quince uh, did not approve of this use of his character, Robilar, and um, has, over the course of years, uh, said that that wasn't really Robilar. And he's actually built up a whole history uh, that it was like a clone who went insane. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, and, and it's well worth seeking out that uh, that revised history of, uh, of Robilar. I forget where, where it was first published, but uh, I think you can find it floating around on the web. So uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think of the comments. Have you ever done anything in the uh, in the bright desert itself? I mean, I know a lot of people have obviously done Ghost Tower of Inverness, but has anybody gone in further past the Abaral's uh, into the desert itself? I'd love to hear what happened to your uh, in your adventures. Um, hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will talk to you all later. Thanks for watching today's video. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Below you'll find links to my Patreon, which helps make these videos possible. You'll also find the web store, where you can buy my books, and my blog, where you'll find all sorts of free downloads and other articles. Thanks, and have a great day.